How are you, child of God? Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this uh, wonderful Sunday service where we are sharing about destroying foundational altars. Let me tell you, foundational altars are not a small matter. They are the major subject of your life. If you don't take foundations seriously, what is in those foundations will affect the rest of your life. Many people are praying and those prayers are not answered because foundations are praying also. Many people are seeking God and they feel like God is not answering them because foundations are interrupting them and they are fighting them in many different ways. I want us to begin by praying. Today we are going to read uh, from the book of First Kings 13 from verse uh, 1, a prophecy about the coming of Josiah. And we will then read from 2 Kings 23, uh, starting from verse 7, where Josiah now fulfills that prophecy. I don't want to start from afar. This issue is about how Josiah destroys altars. Josiah destroys altars in the foundation of Israel. Whenever you see your relationship with God not going well, whenever you see your relationship with people, your relationship with your wife, your relationship with others, even business not going well, Know that the foundations are praying. The foundations are fighting. The only escape and the only way to overcome is to go directly against foundation. The only language that the enemy understands is a language of war, is a language of spiritual confrontation. And I thank God that he gave us all the power we need, excess power, let me say, to completely vanquish and destroy the foundations of the enemy. Let me begin by praying. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord God, for your mighty hand, for your power, for your love. I thank you for destroying wicked foundations that speak against us. I know that the enemy has already established foundations against many of us, and we are tied down to those foundations. And no matter how much we fight, if we don't address the foundation, our lives will continue to be that of suffering. I thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for your mighty hand and for your glorious power. I thank you for your provision your provision of life, your provision of money, your provision of food, your provision of everything we need. There is nothing you did not give us that we need. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll read from 1 Kings 13, 1 Kings 13, beginning from verse 1. By the word of the Lord, a man of God came from Judah to Bethel, as Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make an offering. He cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord, saying, O altar, altar, this is what the Lord says. And son named Josiah will be born to the house of David. On you he will sacrifice the priests of the high places, who now make offerings here, and human bones will be burned on you. That same day, the man of God gave a sign. This is the sign the Lord has declared. The altar will be split apart. And the ashes on it will be poured out. A prophecy is given of a son who shall be born from the house of David. His name is going to be called Josiah. And this young man, when he gets of age, he will sacrifice the priests of a certain altar. And he will split the altar in half and completely destroy it. It's a prophecy about the destruction of the altar. Let me tell you the truth. God hates altars of demons. Because the altars of demons are always casting aspersions on our lives. The challenges that we face come from the foundations. The issues that we deal with come from the foundations. And in those foundations, we find altars. Altars by our forefathers. Altars from our mother's house. Right now as I'm preaching, I want you to lift up your voice and say, You inherited serpent. Die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to say again, inherited altars, perish, be broken to pieces in Jesus' name. Let me tell you, there are so many things you are going to fight that will come from the altar. Sometimes uh, I remind people that the foundation carries a lot of significance in your life. Significance about whether you are going to fulfill your purpose in life. Significance about the kind of family you are going to have the kind of people you are going to invite in your life. Unfortunately for many people, it was after you had already married 
it was already after you had settled down that you realized that it is the altar from your father's house, from your mother's house, that put you in that marriage. Now you have to work hard through prayer to destroy whatever it is that the enemy put through that marriage, whatever altar that the enemy erected. Let me tell you, demons are working 24-7. They're working overtime to erect various altars that fight the mission and purpose of God in our lives. I'll read again from 2 Kings 23. 2 Kings 23. From verse 6. This is Josiah now being referred to. He took the Asherah pole from the temple of the Lord to the Kidron Valley outside Jerusalem and bent it there. He ground it to powder and scattered the dust over the graves of the common people. He also tore down the quarters of the male shrine prostitutes which were in the temple of the Lord where the women did weaving for Asherah. Verse 8. Josiah brought all the priests from the towns of Judah and desecrated the high places from Geda to Beersheba where the priests had burnt incense. He broke down the shrines at the gates and at the entrance of the gate of Joshua, the city governor, which is on the left of the city gate. Although the priests of the high places did not serve at the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, they ate unleavened bread with their fellow priests. He desecrated Vestain, he desecrated the Tophet, which was in the valley of Ben Hinnon, so no one could use it to sacrifice his son or daughter in the fire of Molech. He removed from the entrance to the temple of the Lord, verse 11, the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun. They were in the court near the room of an official named Nathan Melech. Josiah then burned the chariots dedicated to the sun. Let me tell you, Josiah was not yet born in the first scripture. First Kings, 20, first Kings 13 verse 2. He was not yet born. And already there were altars in Jerusalem that were dedicated to Asherah, that were dedicated to Baal and to the sun. And those altars were in the house of the Lord. And they were fighting against the worship of the one true God. But God releases a solution through Josiah. He first of all sends a prophet who goes to the altar while people were still serving apostasy, while people were still serving abominable things. And he says, O altar, altar, you shall be broken in half. Your ashes shall be cast down. You shall be destroyed. Let me tell you the truth. Before you were born, there were altars that were already at work in your life. There were altars that the forefathers had already er erected. Altars that you must now prophesy against. Altars whose destruction your very life, your very marriage counts upon. When those altars are not destroyed and they are allowed to continue, problems from those altars will continue. And this is how things happen. When an altar is erected and an altar is operating against a family because a high priest or a person upon whom a demon comes and rests, what happens is that that high priest connects the whole family to the altar. And that altar continues to demand promises made upon it. If that altar demands that children do not get married, they will not get married. Because whenever the altar is erected in the spirit realm, demons will be enforcing the desires of the family idol. So I want to pray this prayer right now. Every witch in your family, every witch in my family, making incantation at a dedicated altar, let that altar be split in half and destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let that witch be bound. Let the altar be of no use from now on. May you be saved. May the altar be completely destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you the truth. As long as the altar is not addressed, as long as the altar is allowed to continue making weird and wicked prophecies and wicked prayers and incantations and hexes, the family will not know any peace. It will be gathering after gathering and people will be accusing each other of different things. But there is no success. There is no progress. 
The only way you as a people who begin to realize progress is after the altar is desecrated and destroyed and an altar unto the Lord is built. Right now in the spirit realm, Father, build an altar unto Jesus Christ. Remove every evil altar that was praying against me, that was fighting against my life, that was speaking against my progress in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, altars are very wicked. Outers are very dangerous. When you are sleeping, outers are praying. When you are walking, outers are praying. When you are looking for a job, outers are praying. They are praying witchcraft prayers. They are praying curses. The reason why God gave us power and the reason why we, we, we wear uh, the full armor of God is that we are going to war. The Bible does not mean its words on this. It says, for we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, which means we wrestle. Never think simply because you are under grace, you will not wrestle. We wrestle against principalities and powers who are worshipped by those altars, who want everyone to make sacrifices to those altars. Every altar demanding sacrifice, demanding worship from me and my family, be ground to powder. Every demon receiving sacrifice from those altars, let them be cast into dungeons of fire. Let them be cast into dungeons of fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, we have to be serious about this. We have to take this very seriously. Otherwise, children will be connected to witchcraft. Otherwise, you yourself will be a victim of massive incantations and hexes that are raised against you daily. Outers must be destroyed mercilessly. Even as I speak right now, may every outer speaking against your marriage be destroyed. May every outer speaking against your finances be destroyed. May every outer standing in any way against you be completely destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Never turn your back on an altar. Know what the altar is about. Deal with the altar. Many people are erecting altars in their homes, under the bed or whatever the case may be, so that they can fight spiritual warfare against people who don't even know that there is a fight going on. Those people only see trouble coming their way. But today, the word of God tells us that Jesus Christ in Galatians 3 verse 18 became a curse for us. And in that way, he took the case which was against you. He took the case which was against me. Colossians 2 verse 14. Every handwriting that stood up against us, Jesus Christ blotted it out and he triumphed over it. Today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I claim my victory over all altars from my father's house. I claim my victory over all altars from my mother's house. I claim my victory and I speak the destruction of any opposing force and power fighting against my victory through Jesus Christ. Child of God, if you do not do anything against the altars, altars will not leave you alone. They will fight you. I want to challenge you today to take your stand against evil altars. Fight against evil altars. Go to any altar in your father's house, in your mother's house. Say, O oh, altar, O oh, altar of anti-marriage, the Lord is speaking judgment against you. Be destroyed. O oh, altar of early death, O oh, altar of untimely death, O oh, altar of poverty, release my money in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak judgment against you. Psalms 149 from verse 7, from verse, 10, verse 7 up to 10, talks about how we, the saints of God, speak judgment against the evil one. Bind with shekels every strong man from your father's house, from your mother's house, tying you to evil altars. You must be set free. No matter what, you need to be set free. I am Minister T.D. Mkana, and I'm going to pray for anyone who is dealing with the issue of altars, who is following this series of altars. I'm going to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, 
I bind every strong man from the father's house. I bind every strong man from the mother's house. Strong man enforcing the cases of the altar. Your time is up. Be bound and be cast into dungeons of fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break your altar in your place, in his place. I enrage an altar unto Christ Jesus. An altar unto Christ Jesus right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Break every altar. Every altar of disease. Every altar of poverty. Every altar fighting against our lives. Be broken. Be destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you my Father. I thank you my Lord. I praise you Father for your mighty hand. Destroy every altar, weaken it and paralyze it completely in just then. Amen. Child of God, take the matter of altar seriously. Research upon it. Read from 1 Kings 13, from verse 2, 2 Kings 23, from verse 6. Read all the way. Throughout the word of God, you will hear about altars, and it is not a joke. The altar of Golgotha came to armor us, to empower us. To fight all these strange and wicked altars. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The spirits that we fight want to be worshipped. And an altar is a symbol of worship. Destroy the altar. Save yourself. Save your family. I am Minister Tidim Kana. And I thank you so much for listening to this message. May God bless you. May God bless your family. From my family to yours, it is bye for now.